excited today. You ex- why are you excited? I'm excited. He's a man from my part of the world. Oh, my goodness. Down under. Down under. Right? How far is New Zealand from Australia? From Sydney, it's about a four-hour flight. Like, oh. it's almost like going to Hawaii. Yay. Oh, oh. You, I was oh. like, what, where are we I, here? I'm okay. hearing myself in stereo. I was like, who's Wait, yelling? You just, gotta, you just gotta turn that <laughs> um, off there. Yes, yeah, so I've been to New Zealand uh, on like passing on my way to LA, and the first time I actually went to New Zealand was when we filmed the, the Legacy episode. Oh. So it's a beautiful part of Very the world. Nice. But they think that they are a little bit above us, Aussies. Really? Well, we're going to have to ask John that. <laughs> we're going to have to ask John that, that you're talking about him they like that. They don't like to be called Australian. They're like, we're from New Zealand. Just That's get it right. honor in that. Yes. Well, John <laughs> has been in, it feels like everything. We were just yes. looking at all of his work. I was like, what? Shut the front door. He's done a lot of w- has, amazing work. Yeah. Amazing. And he's he's also does a ton of voiceover <clears throat> done all these different accents and it's quite amazing so yeah we're so excited to have John on the show today you know him as uh from spd mystic, mystic force no samurai Hobson, samurai star star wars, wars. The, hobbit. Show. the hobbit uh, i mean we could go on for hours and the young rock let's as just well. bring him in let's just bring him in <laughs> without further ado mr john, john Woo! hi everybody hi. Uh, thank you for having me on Good. And uh, good morning from New Zealand, Ranger World. Yes. <clears throat> oh, it was so happy to have you, John. We haven't seen you in a couple of years. The first time we met you was at Ranger Stop. Yeah. Yep, uh, in Orlando. Yes, yeah. exactly. Crazy time. Awesome. Yes. So that was awesome. we have to ask this question because she said <laughs> that um, New Zealanders do not like to be called Australian, that you think you're a little bit above <laughs> the Aussies. Is that true? John, <laughs> uh, uh, there's a true and a false there. Uh, <laughs> false, false. We do not see ourselves uh, uh, better than the Aussies. They're our Anzac brothers. Yes, and, uh, our country's histories uh, have uh, served in a, a few wars together, so they're like our our big brothers in a way. And two, no, we are <laughs> we're not Australians. So we're very proud uh, <laughs> group of people in New Zealand, Aotearoa. Yeah. Yes. I no, it's, it's all in good fun, of course. Um, that's it, that's it, man. And, uh, you know. It started uh, with the I'd, uh, I'd like to wish everybody uh, the best out there who have had to deal with the past year and dealing with COVID, to all my uh, Ranger fans, uh, friends and family. So, yeah, love from New Zealand. So i get that out there. <laughs> I wish we were over there with you because your Prime Minister did it right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she's, she's awesome. She's awesome, you know. Yeah, um, she sure is. Some of the best world leaders are female, so let's not forget that. Girl, she, led, she, led, she led our country. She cared about us. Yes, she sure did. She cared about us. She put us first. She was a uh, new mother. She was a young mother um, when when this happened. And a year before, she addressed the country and comforted us and looked after us during a terrorist attack that happened here on our shores. Ooh, yeah. um, I just think she's been awesome. She's been wow. a great leader. Yes, what a beautiful part of the world to live in and grow up in. Yeah, I've seen pictures. I've I didn't I haven't actually gotten an opportunity to travel there. When um, Kat got married, I was supposed to be one of her bridesmaids, but I was nine months pregnant, so I could not get on the plane. So I haven't gotten a chance to see that part of the world yet. But you don't enough know. about us. What what have you been up to before we get to some of these questions? What is what are you currently up to? Right now, Mr. Tui. Right now, I'm um, just uh, being a father and um, got my hand on a few jars here in New Zealand. So, uh, yeah, I'm just just pushing, just working and um, enjoying, you know, watching some of the fruits of my labor, like um, seeing Young Rock uh, being played down here in New Zealand is uh, monumental for me as a Kiwi actor who's uh, been trying to get this uh, career going for 20 years. I went through training. Um, you know, uh, early year two thousand, um, to pursue this this thing uh, that a lot of people like, 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 like acting and uh, watching movies, and they want to be part of that. You know, some people, and now the social media's out there. It's, it's really good watching a lot of people being able to express their talent, and their their craft out there, yeah. without having to go what a lot of us had to go through during the late nineties, right. early two thousands. You know, mm-hmm. so, yeah. how old are your kids, John? Uh, my oldest is uh, 16. I've, he's turning 17 this year. I've got a 12 year old, 13 uh, year old daughter and twin 12 uh, year olds. 
Twins. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you got your hands full. Oh, your wife has her hands full, too. <laughs> that's okay. awesome. Mean. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, let's. we have a lot of questions coming in for you from fans. Yeah. Everyone was extremely excited that you were coming on today because they don't get to hear from you too often. Um, so... <laughs> Very, very happy to have you and have you answer all these wonderful questions. So the first one is from one of our members. His name is Thomas Powell. And we've taught you the Super Chat dance, so you're going to have to do that with us. You ready? Super Chat! Raise my high! <laughs> Did you see his eyes? <laughs> I was, I was you did it. <laughs> you did it. Good very job. job. Okay. This is from Thomas. Okay. Hi, Kat Nikki. A special hi to John Tui. My question to you is, did you wear doggy costume in SPD or did you just provide the voice? Oh, I, I, I wore the costume. Yeah. Was that hard? Well, I, I yeah, man, it was massive. <laughs> <laughs> it was a massive costume. Uh, when I auditioned um, uh, to get the role, I wore a paper bag on my head. And, you know, when I'd rehearsed, you know, you, when you're an actor and you're going through your lines, finding greatness in that night before while you're staying up, memorizing the lines. I got there and I had my whole my whole physicality, everything sort of my voice. So I tried to find the base of who Doggy Cooper was. And then kept massaging. As soon as I got there, like, put this bag on your head because um, you're going to be wearing a mask. I was like, oh, what? I'm going to be hiding the moneymaker? What's going on? And then, yeah, put it on and still <laughs> did the performance. And it was the physicality. I was, uh, I was training then. I was pretty fit. Um, I thought I could bring the weight to the character. And when you have that taken away from you, your ego goes out the door and then you have to find the core of the character. So, yeah, it, there is a difference too. Like I felt more connected to uh, playing Doggy Kruger because I I did the physicality. I wore the costume, this huge uh, leather trench coat with these uh, football pads, tights, and then these big ski boots for the paws. And then I had to find his posture, and I, because of the way he was designed, he looked like a like a Doberman dog sphinx from the Egyptian. Yeah, uh, one of the Egyptian gods. So I had to find the way he walked with weight. Mm. And um, you know, when I when I went through my training, I did a lot of theatre. You know, I had the opportunity to play Othello, uh, Brutus, and uh, Julius Caesar. And finding the physicality to to your character is important. You can't just plod through it. You have to. It's a dance. It's choreographed. And we know that doing Power Rangers as well. It was very theatrical with the, some of how we act. So I think the, three, the screen perspective is good, having the stillness. But in our Power Ranger world, performing these characters, everything is big, you know, and it's <laughs> strong. Yep. And it has to hit. And it's energy. It's power. It's love. There's like the themes are massive. So, yeah. So I had the, I found his swagger and I found the way he, he and then it just translated into my voice. So I did a lot of voice work. Um, I mean, you know, my accent's different from the way I played the character. But, yeah. Um, yeah, 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 it was, it was cool. So I had to wear the head and the head was mechanically operated um, by two people. I wondered the eyes and the mouth and but it weighed about 15 pounds. Wow. And it was like, and it was hot in there. Yeah. And we shot it during summer. And I'd been a uh, father for a year. I'd been out of drama school. I'd get no work, just commercials. And then I, I hit Disney's Power Rangers. So I, I poured everything into that for preparation, and I just wanted to get it right. So, I, you know, even though it found, sounds very artsy, and I, I feel when you are absolutely prepared with your character on every, every avenue. So when you get the script and, it, you know, there are times where you feel flat, you're just like, oh, man, this is, this is mine. Give it a hundred. And that was my uh, work with Doggy. Yeah, I wore the mask. I did the physicality. I had to operate. I had to do deliver the lines so the actors could uh, uh, respond. You know, it was there was no reader on set. It wasn't the AD. It was me and the actors. And even though they couldn't see me through Dog's mouth with my eyes, I could see them through this gap. And uh, I had some massive scenes in there. And like, well, I'd cry in there. There were some powerful moments. Like when. Uh, Doggy Kruger found out that he wasn't the last of his kind, that his wife was still alive. Mm. And I had to go there, so I affected my voice when I spoke to them. It was awesome. That's so craft. That's really amazing. 
that's why you're such an amazing voiceover actor because you really connect to the, the character and people think with voiceover that you're not, um, it's easier and it's not, it's no, way harder actually no. to convey that emotion through your voice is, is very challenging. Yeah. Well, I, I think you, what people don't get when we do ranges too as well, and this is all from my opinion, this is from my side of the, of the glass, this is, you know, allowing you to peep into the room through the keyhole I let you peep through and it's, what people don't get is when you're in ADR and you're voicing some of these characters, there's an energy building. I don't care how good you are, but you don't just walk in there, disrespect the process and go, I'm going to make this voice sound like I'm actually I've been fighting for five minutes of beating some of these bad people or bad, bad, um, you know, uh, villains. And then I walk up and have a cup of coffee. Now there's an energy you got to have in this to translate. Otherwise it doesn't work. It doesn't yeah. work. You wouldn't believe it, you know? Yeah. But we know when we arrive. And they want to pick up, and we get there. We've been sprinting up the hill. You don't get there and start going, listen, where are they? <laughs> <laughs> so true. So true. Where are they, Xander? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, Kat and I were just having a conversation um, about characters, and when we put on our wardrobe, how it defines who we are. It helps create the character. And oh, absolutely. We're talking about... Um, your you posture up, man? And the, yeah, yeah, yeah. We were creating new characters for our show, mm -hmm. Power Rangers Playback. Where and so there's certain there's certain demeanors and characteristics and the way they walk and the way they move their arms and the way they you know they talk and move the head and stuff. It's uh, it really really helps with developing a character. Mm -hmm. um, it's so Absolutely. true. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Next next question. Yes. It is. Tanisha Vasquez oh, no. Banks. Was a, there was a shout out from Jarrell. Oh. Spain. Hola. Oh, that Jarell. was removed here. Oh. Shout out to Jarrell. Jarrell. One, one of our members. members. Super chat. Where's my pie? pie. It Thank says, you, Jarrell. It was retracted. Okay. okay. All right. Tanisha Vasquez Banks. Hey, Kat, Nakia, and John. What is what it was like what was it like to work with michelle langstone and peter rudder also what was it like to play kruger and daggeron did i pronounce that correctly daggeron okay yeah. daggeron solaris night um so the first part is um how was it to work with michelle langstone and peter rudder oh constant professional mm. and the, yeah, that's awesome and it just makes dream work man you know, I've worked with a lot of uh, a lot of giving actors, and then a lot of selfish actors, and a lot of entitled actors. I've worked with, them, with all of them across the board, and they they're both um, uh, giving, professional, caring oh. actors. It just makes the the job easier. Mm -hmm. um, nothing but respect for both of them. Aww. And what was it like to play Kruger and Daggeron? Uh different because there were the seasons were back to back so i couldn't give a performance that was club but you know but uh, some people could listen or they could pick up on my voice they knew it was me mm. um but they didn't know you know the, the thing about being under the mask is uh you know you're you're free of judgment because they don't box you you know mm. you're this energy you're this spirit you're this voice you're this presence and the amount of people that see me and see this you know, hefty, handsome Polynesian. Ah. <laughs> so modern. Yes. <laughs> modern. No, no. Um, uh, they, you know, I surprised them. I catch them off guard. They're like, oh, that's the dude. Is that him? Is that him? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. Uh, the, energies, the energies were different. But one thing I did find that was a common trait between, and this is throughout the series with a lot of the mentors that come in and inject confidence in these young cadets to battle evil and overcome and represent and enjoy their differences and mesh and, 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 and celebrate their diversity and win and good is good and bad is bad and you can overcome it, any challenge, you know? And the mentor that comes in, for me, the, same, the, the energy was there. I'm going to help you, but you need to submit a lot of your ego to come to my process and we will win together. I'm here to enhance that. And I, you, know, you look at the colors and the energy. It's like, uh, I think when I was there for SPD, I got to meet the Rangers that were before me. Forgive me, I can't remember. And then when I did uh, uh, Mystic Force, I got to meet the new Rangers. And then 
you know, started looking at the series differently then because, yeah, the, the, the characters were different, but the energies were the same. Um, I based uh, Doggy Kruger on, uh, you know, uh, I keep telling people this too, is like uh, growing up as a kid, I saw uh, Patton as a, as a kid and I just, uh, I liked the man's heart. <laughs> he was a uh, toughness, you know, so I, I made him military. I made uh, uh, Doggy Kruger, Anubis Doggy Kruger, very militant. He was a general. Mm. Yeah, it was, the man was upright and, and would die for honor, you know, like a samurai. Like I just made him this beast of a man. With Daggeron I, and Solaris Knight, I based uh, their character on uh, Russell Crowe's performance in Gladiator. Mm. Uh, you know, and he was more, and, and then I got to, you know, really show off my acting chops then, you know, mm. and that's like, uh, it caters to the, to the actor's ego to be seen, but it's more like, um, now I can show you what I can do. So yeah. it was, I was this Polynesian looking, um, yeah, Maximus. Maximus. <laughs> I love, love it. Maximus. Love it. All right. We have a ton of super chats coming in for you. So we're going to try. Awesome, man. Oh. Yes. Woo, okay. Terrell. Terrell. Super chat. Raise them up high. Nakia and Kat, thank you for creating Power Rangers Playback. You gals bring joy and laughter to the world. Oh, thank you. It's very much appreciated, especially during these times. Keep up the good work. Oh, oh thank, thank you, Terrell. I, so nice. I saw that tail end um, where you were about to do the super chat, and then you did this with your hand. <laughs> <laughs> we Jones. left you hanging. <laughs> and Terrell, actually, his question goes on again because he says... Uh, Hello, John. I love you on SPD. What was your mentor? What, uh, who was your mentor or role model when you were growing up? Oh, my father. Oh. My dad. That's awesome. All right. Next one. Um, Ty Sue. Super chat. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, super <laughs> chat. Raise them up high. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hi, Nakia, Catherine, and John. What is your favorite episode of SPD and Mystic Force? <laughs> oh, that we've got him. We've stumped I, I, I mean, I feel, I feel, I feel stink, man, because I, I don't know the actual episode number, but it was, um, it was the episode, it was a double episode for me. There's a double episode of Doggy Kruger finding out his wife was alive and that he wasn't the last of his race. So he wasn't the last of the Mohicans. And then his, the love of his life was there. That was the one I remembered the most because of that, uh, the emotion uh, through some of the speeches I had to do to the um, other actors. And I, I said it at the um, Orlando thing is one of my most heartfelt performances. Because if you exhaust you're crying in one scene and they make you do it eight times and you've got to reproduce it. Like it's, it's taxing, man, to go to that place and then to just turn it on. And that's what makes us different from other actors is that emotional demand and then still keep the animation and the energy high. It's counterintuitive sometimes, but mm -hmm. some of the scenes are massive. Man. It's so interesting. You, you talk about the um, emotions in, in the Power Ranger seasons that you were involved in and I don't feel like our our seasons, Power Rangers, Zeo, you know, in the early '90s, um, we didn't really deal with a lot of emotional scenes. Do you remember having any like the really where, deep? Yeah, we had the the King for a Day where I had to cry because Tommy was being held captive, and you had one when you, uh, you, you guys set the tone, and then the right, you know, you, you look at what's in at the time in the theaters and what's in at yeah. the time in Hollywood whether the vampires are coming back, whether we're going into uh, Lord of the Rings world, you know what I mean? There's, a, there's this regurgitation of genres and storylines. So the writers change through Disney as well. Now we've got to always, well, for me, the way I made everything oh, you very were, clear to me. You were Disney. We weren't Disney. We were. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So they had a different team of writers, you know? Yeah. If you look at the Japanese storylines, totally different, man. Yeah. And we, you know, we go, oh my goodness, they're taking it to another level. But if you look at, what the norm is over there and what audience they're trying to get. It's, it's a, yeah, the marketing is, is massive on this. The writers, the team of writers that come in to tell these stories. It's going for what, nearly 40 years, man? Like, a long that's how us. Oh, it's just yeah. insane. Since 90, 93. Since 93. So, was Power Rangers your first, um, your first main, like, series regular job after drama school? Yeah, well, after drama school, it was commercials. You know how it is. Yes. It's just commercials, commercials, 
uh, whatever gig. You're literally digging around for scraps because you've just hit the scene. And they're always looking for the current look that's the hottest thing at the time. And then you fall onto these shelves, you know. Um, I think my career has changed because I've learned to accept a few things and just stayed in my lane and been comfortable with it. But, um, yeah, it was, it, Power Rangers was my first. My first, it was my first gig, and it was shot here in New Zealand, not seen, you know. In Australia, it was seen, so the nostalgia of being recognized was not there, but I was making that money. I was young, you know, I was, it, it was Disney. But, but is it shot, because it was shot here in New Zealand, it, it wasn't like, if it was shot in LA and I'd flown to LA to shoot it, I'd be like, man, it's Power Rangers. But it felt like another world, like, go down farmland. Backstreet industry area, and then boom, there's a studio. And, oh my goodness, this is where they shoot Power Rangers. <laughs> Very humble. <laughs> Crazy. But it was my, it was my, it was my first gig. The money, the attention, the exposure on the international stage too, not in my country. Usually, if you go in Australia, and New Zealand, you you get exposed on your your national TV shows that are on there, and you know the cool things that are on there, and then they'd be like, who's that guy? Is he have potential? Is he versatile? What can we cast him? And then you looked at like that with, as an actor, and that's real talk. Yeah. That's real talk from experience, you know. And I'll I'll own it from this end. If anybody wants to go down there, but um, yeah, when I got Power Rangers, yeah, it changed changed my stance forever, pretty much. And went, oh, it was so fulfilling to know that I'd gone through did this degree. My goals were to come to America, like everybody's dreams from Russia to London to you know, oh, I'm gonna. Graduate from acting school and be the next <laughs> biggest thing that hits Hollywood. You know? <laughs> I'm I'm classically trained. I do Shakespeare, and I'm getting so do chill with that, bro. <laughs> what drama school did yeah. you go to? Nah, man. Um, it was my biggest gig, and then to do it two, two seasons in a row was massive. What? And then that's all I knew. And then the hard, the most humbling thing was leaving Rangers, and then. Getting an audition commercial, and I was just sitting there, whoa, whoa, hold on, man. Like, that, that's the thing that a lot of people don't talk about is everyone's talking about chasing it, but maintaining it, maintaining it, and finding the love for it to do it, and then dealing with it afterwards. The mental health um, issues I've seen with a lot of people that deal with the once the, the shine's gone, you know. And then the next time I see a lot of these actors and stuff, and I'm like, man, how you doing? And they're like, well, I've been working on the script. I've got meetings. I'm like, bro, I'm not even asking you about that, bro. <laughs> I don't know, but it's, it's such a Hollywood thing sometimes. Yeah, you know God. I, mean? yeah, I know that from little country back in New Zealand. I'm from the hood in New Zealand and Auckland City. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I get it, man. But yeah, I'm very real about it because I don't, I don't want to see young people go out there in this industry and just totally give themselves up for it, chasing it, you know? So I look at social media, you know, the, sometimes the good in social media scene, they have a platform to express their art and their craft and whatever they want to do. But, man, I've swam with the sharks in this industry, man. I've seen it break people, you know? So anyone out there who has any ambitions to come down, like, know what your goals are doing it for is, you know, well, what do you want to do it for? What are you chasing? Because it can get depressing when you're not getting these auditions and you're not where you think you should be. It takes work, man. It takes work. That's why when I did your podcast, I see I've seen you both. When I saw you at Orlando, I was like, you're cool people. And I think that's what the Ranger world. I've met some really awesome people in this Ranger world. Like I was very new to the scene when I got to Orlando, and um, going into that uh, that event for me reinvigorated my connection with the Power Rangers fandom. It reminded me what I appreciated about it. it reminded me that as an actor, uh, going through that world and seeing how big it was, not only united people across the globe, man. This is one of my biggest franchises ever. And I've, I felt kind of guilty because I felt like I'd never catch back in on it, you know? And then when I, I talked to other people, they're like, you should go to these conventions and meet all these people. And I'm like, oh, yeah, Orlando was my first and I really enjoyed it. So. First I'm very humble ever. and grateful for the, for the range of support. Yeah. yeah. First of many, like yes. that. Yes, first saying. of many. We hope to see you again. Soon. Yes, yes. Um, okay, next question is Edgar Daza. Super chat. Resume up high. Uh-oh. Oh. <laughs> Man, you, you just come out like that. Your energy. I was actually looking at my list so I don't go off topic. <laughs> oh, man. Carry on. I'll give you the next one. 
Oh, what was the question? Yeah. Hi, John. You are amazing. How was the casting for your character in Star Wars Solo? And could you tell us some behind-the-scenes stuff about the movie? When? Uh, well, how far behind the scenes you got to pay for? Uh, uh, listen, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, Star Wars for me was bittersweet, man. It was bittersweet because I got the prestige of flying over there, staying over there for nearly two months. Working with Ron Howard, working with uh, uh, Chris and Phil uh, before they got fired, and, well, before they separated, because there's a lot of controversy about what happened over there. Flew back to um, um, Solo to shoot the, the rest of it and then get cut. Mo mo uh, my scene in the Mimbimian Wars with um, Solo got cut out of the movie. And I found that out when I went to the premiere in Sydney. And it was like, it was a massive learning experience. But at the same time, I was kind of grateful because I, I got to add that to my, my experience with the work with Woody Harrelson. Um, oh, just just some massive stars. You know, it was an ex And plus, you know, I'd grown up watching Star Wars. Like, and I could see the influence of, of Star Wars and a lot of that uh, on Power Rangers too, you know. Um, yeah, it was, it was awesome. But the work with Ron Howard, man. Like, wow. As, as an actor, to be directed by him, um, to be part of the... the Star Wars world, and if you go to the um, deleted scenes on YouTube for uh, Solo, you're gonna see my. I I had this scene in, in the during the Mimbimian Wars where I just lighted up with this like mini gun, mini laser gun, like you could say they've ever sat there. And I've got like a a, fo a photos. I'm, I'm I'm in the movie, but it's like Mike Wazowski on um, Monsters Inc. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm in the movie. <laughs> Um, wow, it was harsh, man. When I went to the premiere and I sat there, and I remember doing some press before it, man, I've known my, some of my scenes were cut out, and it was like, it was humbling for me. Yeah. But I always looked, I looked at the silver lining as a knack, and it was just like I was just grateful one to have that credit of working, to have the experience of working with like Amelia from Game of Thrones, you know, the dragon lady. Uh, no, <laughs> try not to say hi in the makeup room, like <laughs> we don't have any scenes together. We don't have any scenes together. And I don't, I don't want to. Remember, I feel like I fanboy any of my cast, it lowers my status. I'm not the equal as an actor. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm well, the way I hold myself on a lot of sets is, yeah, but I'll keep it real when I come home, man. I'll be like, wow, <laughs> working with this person and we went out and had coffee and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's cool. It's really uh, cool. Tandy Newton. Tandy Newton was an actress that I loved working with on there. And I was a huge fan. Because she did, she worked on Gridlock with my boy Tupac, and I was a huge, I'm a huge Tupac fan all day. Yeah, and when I worked with her, I was like waiting, buying my time to go. What was it like working with my black prince Tupac? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, well, you know, he... she is pretty awesome. And it, that, that's some of the stories of working over there. I got to work in Pinewood Studios in London, where one two of my favorite movies of all time in my top ten were filmed there: Full Metal Jacket and Alien. Yeah, and that's you know, so just. It's kind of, you know, it's kind of holy for me. Like when, when I was working, shooting some pickups for, for ba Battleship and I'm in Universal Studios. Wow. And what people don't get is that, and I wish if I, I had a social media account then as well, I was shooting. One of the days I got off, I went through the rides and I went on the, um, the tours and we passed the studio where we were <laughs> shooting Battleship. And I remember waving up to Peter Bergen and I'm like, what the hell is this? <laughs> I'm, as, as much as I'm over there shooting movies and enjoying it, I'm still a, a tourist as well. And I wanted to go on Universal Studios, go see the Jaws ride. Of course. All that stuff. I'm, I'm no thrills, man. I'm a simple person. It's the way I like to be. <clears throat> you take your job seriously. That's what I love about you yeah. as an actor. I think it's, it's amazing to see an actor put so much heart and integrity into their work. And this isn't about you being famous. It's because you really love what you do, and that shows. So yeah, I love what I do, but it has to pay. Like it has to coexist with me providing for my family. I'm a father and a husband first and foremost. Mm -hmm. You know, I am. A, I'm a son. Um, so I grew up in a very a middle class, working class family. I'm the son of uh, proud Tongan immigrants that uh, immigrated to New Zealand during uh, uh, the Vietnam War during during the seventies, during the late sixties, seventies. Yeah. And you come here with those big dreams that a lot of people go to America with, you know. And they've, they've, I've, I've always held that close to me. I've seen, seen how hard they work. So I hold, I hold myself to account for a lot of things, which I hope keeps me humble. Because yeah, being in this isn't this industry, man. Is uh, so 
all we see is the glamour on top, but no one sees the hard work. No one talks about it. Absolutely. You don't see uh, negative, depressing stories too much on social media unless they're trying to uh, gather likes. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah. I have a million, to grounded. a million questions personally that I want to ask you. Me too. Uh, <laughs> but we have like, like I feel like I just right. to call you one day and we just need to chat because I, I love that you're real and you've said some things on here that people need to know. And Kat and I talk about that on our podcast Super Chat with Kat Nakia, where people get a chance to see who we are as people outside of actors, outside. We are mothers, we are wives, and we are children of God first. And I love that you said that that's who you are first, because your family is so important to you. And it's not Hollywood that is going to make or break our lives. It can't be. because oh, You know, for all of the people we admire, we see their talent. They're talented. I trust me. Like, they're talented. And I... Um, the only thing I want to uh, add to that is, but you also your humanity is tested too. You know, when you go through this industry, your humanity is tested, and like that's why I I like to judge character more than 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 a couple, and it's 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 worked for me because I've kept the right people around me. I've uh, ho- hopefully I have, and I'm still growing, still growing in terms of you know people always say you should do a movie on this. And I'm like okay, write it, produce it. <laughs> And then come back. Like ideas are so easily juggled around, but the, the application of following that idea with a plan and being tenacious, like that. you know, like if young people come up to me and I'm in the mall and they, the first thing out their mouths is, um, "Hey man, I, I've I enjoyed watching on this," and I'm like, "Thank you, you know, that's my craft. I've left that, but that's for you to enjoy, and hopefully, I'm doing good work." But, but if someone comes up and says, "I want to be an actress or an actor," and I'm like, "What is the what's the thought behind that?" Because I already know, I feel like I do, it's that attention. You can really go crazy chasing that and trying to get people to like it. But when you're alone, it's when, it's when you talk to yourself and go, what am I doing that brings me happiness? And that's why I keep telling a lot of these young people, I've got children. You know, like, love yourself. Learn to love yourself. Look at that person in the mirror and love yourself. Don't, don't fake it with anybody out there, but don't be mean. It's, it's the Power Ranger attitude, man. Acceptance and our diversity. And our fans are diverse, man. You know what I mean, and I and I want them to all know <laughs> out there that you're enough. You don't have to find your happiness, find your core. You're enough, man. If it's you, if if there's energy or there's things that are making you unhappy, and so try to pull yourself away from that and focus on you. You are the center of your universe, and once you learn to love yourself, I think it emanates onto other people. Yeah, you know, there's a calm and a peace that comes with that. And for me in this industry. That I've seen really turn a lot of people out <laughs> and, and, and make people fake or act in a certain way, or there's an entitlement. Uh, it's just the swagger in the song. You know, my man, just slow down, slow down, breathe. Mm. It's good to be alive. I've buried a lot of uh, uh, people in my life at a young age. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, yeah. You're a good man, John. Love you, John. Okay. Matthias. Let's go. They go with that stress real quick. Okay, let's go. Uh, any more questions? <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> Matthias Rodriguez. Super Dad. Raise my pie. <laughs> <laughs> um, Krug- oh, it's your turn. Oh. Uh, Kruger and Dagger are on a part of our childhood. Please say hello to our group from Brazil. Okay. This is a mouthful. You ready? Brazil. Po- morphin. Morphin. Post gem. Can you say that? Morphin yeah. poster gem. Morphin poster gem. Yeah, yes. they want a shout out from you. Most morphin poster gem. Most morphin poster gem. Thank you. <laughs> he thank said, you. "Thank you thank all." You, John. John Tui rocks. Yes, he does. <laughs> yeah. Yes. All right. Oh, Aaron Coney. Hey, hey Aaron Coney. Hey. John um, Tui is my girls. What did he say? He said, uh, John, John Tui, Tui is, is my, my girls in the house. Is the girl, oh, my girls with my girls in the house. <laughs> <laughs> woo, 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 woo. Okay. Star um, <laughs> Raven. One of our channel, channel members. members. Sippy Chat. Uh, Raven my pie. All right. Greetings, Nakia and Kat. Hope all is well. I'm stuck at work. Laugh out loud. But, John, you're one of my favorite sixth rangers for both roles that you played. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Star. 
Uh, Dave, 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 Dave Plavi. Plavi. You know Dave Plav. Oh, yes. That's, that's, that's my guy, man. Yes. <laughs> See the chat. Raise him up high. Dave says, uh, Don, Corso had a lot of backstory in Solo, but was all cut. Before Ron Howard joined to direct it, is it true Corso was supposed to be Lando's brother? Wow. I... Oh, bro, I'm sorry. I have no idea. But, uh, you know, uh, they paid the invoice and I gave them the best I could. <laughs> Good answer. Honest answer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, 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 I give everything 100, man, because you, 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 you don't want your kids going. Oh, my God, <laughs> Dad, you're so embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good answer. All right, Tim. Tim Dacus. Super chat. Raise him up high. high. Hi, John. Tomorrow's both mine and Fyrus, Fyrus, Mystic Red's birthday. Can you please do Doggy's voice saying you'll make a great ranger, Tim? Welcome to SPD. Oh. You'll make a great ranger, Tim. Welcome to SPD. Oh! <laughs> Very nice. Such a great voice. Yes. You do have a very velvety, strong yes. raspiness to your voice. Yes. Stop it, you two. You're becoming my favorite interview. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's, it's just, just Moira. Moira. One of our channel members. Super chat. Raise them up high. It's just oh, Moira. Out of all of the roles you've had, which role has been your favorite? Oh, that's a tough question. Mm. That's like choosing a child. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of it's kind of hard. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, the only answer I have for that is like whether I'm doing a two hundred dollar commercial for a Tic Tac, or I'm on set with Liam Neeson and Rihanna on Battleship. I, I empty the tank, man. It's it. I, there's nothing I've gone into and been half assed. Not rugby. Oh. Not anything, you know. So, in terms of if, the, if what I liked the most, in terms of it being enjoying it, um, um, I can't choose. Yeah, it's like it's like two child, and I've got twins. Ask me uh, which one I love. It, it's like it'll, it'll send to my madness, man. Like, like, I can't, I can't, I won't, and I, I, I can never. You and should who are never. We to judge? <laughs> no, no, don't ever, don't ever, don't ever, ever. I love you're my favorite one that was born at this time. <laughs> Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> yes, John is. Um, do, has any of your children expressed interest in acting? Mm -hmm. Uh, they. I see. I see it in all of them. Yeah. <laughs> I see it in all of them. We're a very expressive family. Um, but in terms of, I don't know, like my uh, one of my twins and my daughter, they're they're natural, they're natural. But I'm a very uh, very particular father, so. I, I, you know, unless they really, I, if I see the bug and they really want to pursue it, because I had a lot of people tell me, don't do it, wasting your time. Mm -hmm. And that's from people I love, man, you know? And that's just their way of caring. It's yeah. just like, okay, this is a great dream since you were a kid. Okay, that's fine. Just do something that's secure. And I'm like sitting there going, yeah. The definition of madness is doing something secure, showing up somewhere at seven o'clock every morning, coming home and complaining about, it. like, I'd rather I'd rather live in fear chasing something I'm passionate about. I love because failing to get there still knows that I I applied myself to go there. It's the it's the, the passion like people shouldn't always expect things to arrive. You should always expect growth and, and moving forward. You, you can't man. You can't be stagnant. So I've just totally forgotten what the question was about, but you know, I'm, <laughs> as I'm rambling, I'm like, I was saying with your kid, had what it... you do. try and find something you're passionate about and love what you do. Otherwise, so, so your direction's justified. Otherwise, you know, like I think it's important for me to. I can't sit up here and go, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with my craft, and I am. I love what I do, but because I've had so many doors close on me, what made me tenacious is because I loved it. I love the challenge, and I'm going to keep going. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I feel like I was born to do this. It brings me happiness and fulfillment in my life. Um, I, I, there's not many. There's not many that I see out there that are like me, and I'm just happy to be me. The contentment in that. Celebrate. But you give me a role. Give me a role, and I'll turn into a titan. Like I've played a gang member before. I've played a loving father. I've played military. I've played navy. I've 
I've been in a fantasy world where I'm wielding an axe into some elf's face oh. as bold gone hobbit. Like I've, I was Julius. You know, I've controlled Roman battalions when I played Marcus Brutus and Julius Caesar oh. on stage. You know, I I killed my wife as Othello, and I loved her. So I've played. <laughs> and, and I, and love I know. My and if you know Shakespeare is Othello, you know he was obsessed with being jealous. So he just, but I'm just saying with these characters, um, I've, yeah, I love what I do, man. And you know, uh, for me, uh, Power Rangers is epic. Everything is epic. It's Shakespearean. The cliffhangers, the storylines, the action. Like we are just creating. It's fast turnaround. You know how it is. But yeah, the storylines get me. Man. Ooh, I love this. I love this. I love this craft. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> I love listening to you speak. I know. It's just so passionate. It's just like it's beautiful. You sit there like it's a story. Beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful. All right. All right. So next one is from Sand, Sand Rock. Rock. Super chat. Raise them up high. Mr. Tui, thank you for being Anubis Kruger. The way you voiced him was amazing. Would you please do the voice either it's morphing time or SPD emergency before you go? Is he paying for this? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Oh, yes. Okay. What's my line? <laughs> <No. laughs> he wants you what? to say it's morphing time or SPD emergency in your Anubis uh, doggy Kruger voice. It's morphing time. SPD emergency. It's getting both. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> okay. All right. Next super chat is Pierre, Pierre Sales, one of our channel members. Yes. Super, super chat. chat. Raise them up high. When playing SWAT instructor Silverback and Kruger in the two-part SWAT oh, yeah. of, <laughs> of SPD, how did you alternate between the two roles? Uh, okay, so like I said, Full Metal Jacket was one of my favorite all-time movies. You know, it was, it was heavy. Uh, but I loved uh, Lee Erming's performance as drill instructor in um, Full Metal Jacket. I am. And so when I, I applied that and that, heavy southern accent, very direct, into Silverback. And I had sh such a short amount of time. And when they when they were trying to cast it, I was like, man, I could, I could smash this role. You know, like, you, I, I know when my cup is half empty and I know when my cup is half full as an actor. So when I see something that I mean, like, I could show off, give it to me, I, I could slay this role, you know? But when I got that and, Saw the script, I was just, yeah, it was Lee Ermey for me. And then I had to find the physicality of a silverback without making him look like, oh, he's a gorilla. So, you know what I mean? So I, I gave him this weight. I saw Planet of the Apes, which I thought was I, right, but, you know, I'm a Tim Burton fan. And, but the physicality in there was the same. And then to have the upright, yeah. So that's, that's how I did silverback. It's and then I applied it. And I was drilling the men. I was drilling in the SPD cast to the point where they, they hated me. Some of them hated me, you know? Who? Who like, hated me? Like, oh. uh, well, you just, like, the, the characters really hated Silverback. You uh -huh. know what I'm saying? Like, that's for me. I had to make them hate me. Because like, as, as soon as I come out of the truck and I'm like, I am Sergeant Silverback. <laughs> I am the worst nightmare you have ever seen. Ooh. Do you understand that? And, just, <laughs> and, just, and it was like a Louisiana thick accent. I didn't want to make them uh, from the bayou, though. So I was just like. Yeah, it was, it was cool. That's so but in terms of them hating me, so we had these moments where they would be abseiling and climbing up on the trees, and then they'll they'll, they'll come down, and then they're running and doing push ups. And I'm just, I go off script, and I'm just, I'm just drilling them. Yeah, really harsh. I'm not swearing, there's no profanity, but I'm like, yeah, yeah. You look like a McMuffin. Like, I was just <laughs> Do you want me to get your mama? Is that what you need? You need your mama? You can't even give me 10 push-ups. Count them out. One, two, faster. Yeah, I'll just... That's fine. So, yeah, Chris and Brandon will come up and be like, dude, man, you need to chill. I'm like, no, this is uh, going method. <laughs> give me 20. We're going method. We're not friends now. I want it to be real. Good <laughs> man. Help us do the chill. I love it. This is just some of the tricks in the bag. Because, like, I don't think you should uh, uh, play with other actors on set. You know, like, for me, if you're going to do any acting technique, if you're going to go all artsy-fartsy, then you need to let the other person know 
what your process is and your technique. Otherwise, you're going to offend them and they're going to think you're a douche. And there's a lot of that in Hollywood already. So I just like working with professional people because you, you want it to shine, man. It's not about you. I don't care how big of a star you are. But when you're ping-ponging a scene, you have to be equal. You can't, like, I don't, if your pay grade is hundreds of millions and over here you're here for 100,000, the art will equalize you. I think you should always ping pong equal, make that scene work, you know? And then some people only turn it on when the camera's on them and they're not there for the other actor. Yeah. You've got the AD sitting there reading lines. I've been around some actors just so selfish sometimes, you know? And they're not, they're not in it for maybe what I am. So I, I try not to expect me from other actors or other people, but... I, I do try to have a professional courtesy attitude on set, so it's reciprocated. And I've just told that person, listen, tell this diva to go over there, put a bit of tape on the wall, tell the AD to read the lines on cue, and I will give you a performance. And that's where you have to have that confidence in yourself as an actor to deliver, because they pay you for it. Mm. That's what people don't get. You're like, you want to come and shine and all that, but you got to put in the work. you got to come in there, repeat these scenes, and so they're like, we don't just all show up on these Hollywood sets and it's easy. Like, there's a lot of waiting around. you got to be focused. You're, you're, you're at catering. You're, back, you're avoiding crafts table because you're watching your weight. Like, there's everything jamming back and forth. And then you have five seconds to go out there and deliver this line we've had waiting. We're sorry to have you waiting for eight hours. Now go. Go. <laughs> and cut. Did you do that again? Reset, 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 go. People don't get the craft. They don't get the art. They see all the shiny and then you got to know that there's a process to that. And I think, um, you know, the more we have people understanding the technical aspects, that's why I think there's more jobs out there for being behind the camera than in front of it. But if you want to be in front of it, you've got to come with a different attitude. you got to come, you know. I mean, I had this chat with Nakia before about I've been in all these rooms with a lot of good looking people, you know. And I already sit there going, I know my point of difference. I know what my point of difference is, what I have to offer. I might not have that chiseled body. I might not have, the, you know what I mean, that hair, but like, I know, you know, and there's, there's a, it's liberating. It's liberating. Yes. I, why didn't I know you when I was acting? I, I could never get past that with auditions of that, that insecurity and that comparison. And you just have to have that. Oh, man. Like they tell you, a lot of them tell me, you know, I've, I've been in the rooms where you're like, you're too big. Too old, you're too fat. Like I get it, man. I get it. And I'm sitting there like, and no one talks about that. No one talks about the leading processes. So when I when I was younger, I used to have this thing with other actors. It's like, don't talk to me about an audition. I don't want to hear it. Don't don't talk about the what ifs and the hopes. I don't want to hear that. You know, like don't talk about auditions. I say to other actors, don't talk about auditions. You might mention to your loved ones a callback. But it's only when you have the role that you can sing on the mountain. That's so know your levels, man. There's levels to this. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Do you like auditioning? I love it if it's a chunky role. Like I'm at a point now where I'm very lucky to have uh, choices. <laughs> but not even. But even with your choices, like they say, your talents are your choices. You've got to be careful what you attach to. Because like sometimes you haven't been working for like three, four months. You get this audition. And it's a but you know it's a smaller production this and that and you're like okay is my career going to go lateral or going to go forward with this uh, like yeah. so you have to make it and then sometimes you're like man I haven't worked anyway I want to be in I want to work I want to create something and you're like the combination might be wrong it's like a, a first time director who doesn't know what the hell they're doing you don't know what the DOP is fresh they've just done commercials like you could be part of a really bad B grade movie but the money was good so what's the what's the give and take here so I keep saying to people there's so many levels to this with these yeah. choices so. I'm grateful that I've got a team around me where we we communicate well, man. I says, give me everything. Because a lot of things that I've booked have gone against the grain in terms of how I look. And that's where I knew that the management team that I've got right now are putting me up for everything. I get it. It's a Caucasian role. He's in his mid-30s, and I'm like thinking, oh, if I put enough makeup on, can I look 30? And then I'm like, nah, bugger that. Give me some bigger roles. Oh, he's a villain? He's Yeah. So some of the choices I've made, I'm just like, and this is going to sound selfish, but I, it's, I don't answer to, to everybody out there. I answer to a certain few people that I'm keeping alive. And I go to myself, how can I show off my skill and my talent in this? What is this role going to be enough for me to go in there so I can make people go, oh, boom, he's done it again. He's doing it again. 
like every movie that I've been part of, um, I've, I've tried to be oh. as versatile as I can with how I look and what I do. Mm. My training, I went through training just so I didn't look like I walked off a football or a rugby field and into an audition and was lucky enough to get a role, you know? So when I say that there's levels to this, um, uh, business, because some people look at it as a business, some some people look at it for the art, some people look at it, you know, and I'm just like, I look at it from a standpoint where I love doing this. It has to coexist with me making money from it. Because I don't see myself doing anything else. Mm. I feel this is what I'm born to do. So, you know, I surround myself with the right people that matter. Don't be around people that take a lot. Be around people that share a lot and share positive stuff. You know what I mean? Not just offload their stuff on you for you to be the counselor. I'm like, my man, I got enough stuff on my plate, bro. Let's let's build each other up. And I, with the fan base, with the, with the range of things, like we too many people like tearing each other down so they can feel up. You know, and that's why when I, I talk to people here from being grown up in a tough neighborhood, it's just like we can take it. So their attitude trans transpires onto everything that I apply myself to. I'm around a lot of smart people. I'm not tech savvy. You know, and they like to feel really uh, powerful by being in. I'm like, yeah, but you haven't been punched in the face before. You know what that's like. <laughs> Do you, you know? know? Well, let, let me punch. And, you. And, and, and for me, it's it's just this. I can't, I, I can't go through the pep talking. I just like this, you know. But all respectful, being respectful with her, but just like life is short. I don't have time for the big man. It's too short, and our youth are just looking for the leadership and so many material stupid things sometimes. And I'm like, love yourself first. Just find your grounding. Find your zen, man. And then just push it out there. Yes. Mm, that's good. Good good words. Wise words from John. From John. We're going to do a new song. Wise words with John. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes. so I, I asked you for an hour. I don't know how many Super Chats we have Let left. check for you. Please check well, to see. Oh, we discuss things. Well, with you let me ramble, man. I Keep going. You guys got to put final it down so we can get uh, it, uh, any more about Rangers. Okay. I mean, it's, you brought up Silverback. I forgot about that. Four. Four and Star. So I'm going to go to Star. Five um, left. Yeah. Five left. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. You got. Sorry for. We got, got five left. You got five more. We keep you another five or so. You answer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice. Okay. You go. That's, that, that's okay, man. Okay, yeah, I okay. Do, I just want... I do another fight. I do oh. another fight with you. Another fight? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, I do another fight. In the end, do another fight. Thank you. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. <laughs> appreciate it. Okay. Super chat. Raise them up high. Super <laughs> chat. Raise them up high. All right. <laughs> My question for John is, what was your reaction... When you were asked to play Daggerin after your role in SPD. Oh, ecstatic. Absolutely ecstatic. Because I had unfinished business with Rangers. It was, oh, because I had, like, kept all this weight off, you know. I'd been training hard, keeping my diet. And, you know, we go through these fads. And I was on, I was on like, a Atkins diet. And I'd shredded, man. And I was sitting there like, what am I going to do with this, you know. <laughs> And then when I was wearing the dogs, the dogs costume, when I was been sweat, like you come out of there just drenched. You had a massive day. You know how it is. You come back from set and you're just like, and you you stay in shape because you you're just constantly burning and sweating and doing physical stuff and acting and yeah. Um. Anyway, when I got dagger on, I was so happy because I was just like, oh, okay, now they get to see, this. and then oh. and then they get to hear, and I'm sitting there like. And, <laughs> You know, wore the, wore the costume. The only thing my regret was the hair, man, because I thought they were going to style it. So I just left my afro out, and then they just gre they just greased it back so I looked like um like an old Tom Jones <laughs> afro grease back, like half Jerry curl, half afro. And I was like, man, why are you do me like that? <laughs> Maybe cut it off or have a nice fade or have like a jar head or something. Like that. Nah, nah. We like that. So we you know had a rat's tail. Like, oh, I had a long uh, last time. A rat's but tail. Just, sometimes I watch. <laughs> you, know, you know how it is when you <laughs> when you watch some of your stuff and you there's a one scene and you're sitting there and you're like, man, I don't like the way I look. And, yes. and you know, like I, I'm just sitting there like, man, why did I turn my head like that? Like, <laughs> washing my chin up. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> like uh, I have a lot of them. Like when I'm watching, like I'm like really proud of it. But I'm sitting there like, ooh, damn. <laughs> oh, I, I <laughs> do that a lot. Turn around. I've got a bit of hair coming like a superman. <laughs> I'm like, why did how did makeup let me go on? See, why did they? Why did I make asked, up asked Nakia about how much she loved her hairstyle. <laughs> She had you, beautiful you, hairstyle. You both, you both look stunning. Oh no no! On Power Rangers, it was a hot bowl of mess. Like we had, we <laughs> had little barrettes like I right did. here. They would hairspray my oh. hair, so when I moved my head, yes. it would be like a helmet. I was like, oh dear lord, <laughs> yeah. And the, and, the, and the costumes are hot, man. Hot. Like I, Doggy Creek was hot because I was a sauna. I could sweat, and no one would see it. Right. Daggeron, like I had leather. We'll be out like in Pinewood Forest during summer, I'm trying to do a scene, and they're constantly like just like patting the the milking Wet. forehead because I'm just sitting there like dripping <laughs> and still trying to be serious, and it's just like leaking <laughs> off my face. <laughs> Having a fight scene, and then coming back and, and <laughs> yeah, just drip. Stop, stop, stop. You're melting into your costume. <laughs> yeah, I, I love, I love, I love getting made up on set. It's just a uh, the most refreshing thing to just constantly get pat, 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 yeah. and then in there, you know, you wish you could go with life in your car, you're on your way to work, <laughs> you know, you're having a Zoom call and you had a makeup crew on standby, like, <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> pat, 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 pat. <laughs> okay, next question is from Kevin1700. Super chat, raise my pie. What's up, ladies and John? Question <laughs> or two about an on-screen acting or overdubbing. Which was more fun and which was more challenging, on-screen or overdubbing? On-screen. I, I love working. On-screen. The dubbing stuff is, is, is people don't get, like when you're doing the, hey, yeah, oh, you know, like all of that. In the studio, you're in the sound box. <clears throat> it's fun, but it, uh, this is me and I hope, I don't lose employment saying this, but like the connection has to be real. Like you, you, you've got to get the timing right with ADR, you know, and making sure it's real. But I love if I can capture it all on set. I love it. that's why I don't mind getting mic'd up during fight scenes and stuff, so I can just do it all there. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I, I agree. Yeah. I absolutely agree. No more super chats, guys. I saw another one just come through. So we're Sorry. gonna, we're gonna stop the super chats <laughs> just so that we can make sure we get to everybody. Dave says, Dave? "Nice shirt, John. What's it say?" <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> that's one of Dave's shirts, right? Very nice. <laughs> Very nice. What does oh what does what does the shirt say? Is that what he asked? No, he no, said, he nice, said shirt. nice. He said nice. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I got it from Orlando, from from, from yeah. the guys. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Dave. Uh, you, bro. Next super chat question is from Jerome91. Super chat, raise my pie. Thank you guys for being an inspiration to multiple generations and for representing multiple cultures and people of color. Oh, you are so welcome. Thank you for having us. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. <laughs> Appreciate it. I think we got like two more left for oh, you, John. thank goodness. We going to try. How many more we got there, girls? You know, John, I have to just tell you, you mentioned Full Metal Jacket. I got to work with Vincent D'Onofrio. Oh, really? He's pretty... Are we pretty... gossiping, darling? Huh? Are we, are we gossiping? No, I, What's he like? I'm sharing just because you mentioned the film, but he, um, his process is very much like what you said. I mean, he's just completely immersed in his characters. And yeah. So, and, uh, you know, a, a lot of them are, and I get it, man. I, I get the uh, the the need to be separate and yeah. have that time because I've seen it with like uh, Rihanna, you know. I've, I've seen it with Dwayne, like on set and everyone's attention. You can feel their presence. Everyone's like, mm, yeah, set. yeah. Here he is. Yeah. This is what he looks like, you know. And for me as an actor, from Woody Harrelson to, and uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't like name dropping, but. Yeah, when you're around them, you can feel their presence. Sometimes yeah. they need that process. They need that space. I, I get it because I've, I've felt glimpses of it in my career. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, how we deal with public or how – but, you know, still remember to keep your humanity. Absolutely. And courtesy goes a long way. I mean, it doesn't mean you go and sit and you say hi to everyone, the extras, the kids. Like, you don't have to be overly nice. But be – like, yeah, just – be real. Be, be, be humble. Be, be humble. humble. And I think it is important to say hello. Like when I uh, produced my own um, uh, web series, 
I, you know, we had we had background actors, you know, the regular cast and so forth. I wanted everybody to feel important and comfortable. whether they and comfortable whether they were background yeah. because you cannot have a movie without background actors. They no, are no, no, and, and, and the, <laughs> There's an energy that comes with that negative side too. If, if you feel that from people, like people don't want to be around you, or that the gossip starts on set, and, you know, it tests everybody's professionalism. Um, yeah, I, I like I said, I get the process, but at the same time, just you see everybody. Yeah. Like I like to see everyone who's catering, and you know, uh, I mean, in wardrobe. Like we go through the process. We know all the wardrobe ladies. We know the gossip and makeup. We love going to makeup, and then we're on set. We know who the ADs are. We know who the system is. From the gaffer to the to the you know to, to sound all of that man there's just a lot of waiting that people don't get we wait the, we rush the they rush friends. you to wait <laughs> yeah and I, and I also feel like you just don't you never know who you whose hearts you're touching number one and what position they're going to be in the future there have been Absolutely. so many people you have encountered that you uh, just in life where and I try to be myself around everybody which is yeah. loving, caring, and, and Horrible, respectful. Horrible, mean, nasty. <laughs> <laughs> because, because I... Oh gosh, there's the truth. <laughs> right now, ladies. <laughs> because I, you know, I do unto others what you want done unto yourself, but also you just never know what position people will be put in, you know, in the future. Um, and so I just want... I, be careful. On your way up, um, yeah. remember those coming, uh, you're on your because you'll be seeing them on the way down. Yes! <laughs> That's, exactly. that's, uh, I think, yes. the, the, you know, for the time I've been doing this, I've yeah, mm. been grateful enough to see a lot of that and hopefully uh, avoid all the, the bull crap that comes with it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Tony okay. Izzo has a super chat for you. Super chat. Super, super chat. chat. Raise, Raise them up high. high. Much love to you, John. Hope all, all is well. well. That was the, the yeah. end. Thank you. A shout out. Um, just loves you. Brandon is saying, okay, let me see how many super What's jazz. Brandon uh, saying? Oh. Okay, there's three. And then, okay. All right. Okay. This is from Geek Revolution. Revolution. Geek Revolution. Geek Revolution. Revolution. <laughs> Greek Revolution. <laughs> Greek Revolution. <laughs> Hi, John. Oh, super jazz. Raise them up high. Hi, John. <laughs> Are you aware of the Power Rangers board game Heroes of the Grid? Kruger is in the game, oh. and he's awesome. awesome. My son plays as you all the time. I, I, wow, that's cool. Tell your son to uh, say, yeah, thank you for supporting, man. Uh, no, I haven't. I haven't. I have not. I'm not really aware of that. Well, Sorry. the game called Heroes, Heroes of the, the Grid. Now John. you know. John. Now you know. No excuse. Oh, I know. You have. I'm going to watch this playback and be like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> how did you not know that? <laughs> Uh, All right, Sarah Almad, one of our chat, chat members. members. Yes, super, super chat. chat, raise them up high. Which season did you enjoy working on more, SPD or Mystic Force, and why? I, wow, I I think in terms of comfort, um, uh, Mystic Force because I wasn't in a costume as much, and uh, like I said, my ego wasn't being catered to because I was in, you know, but I was doing the physicality. I but I liked. SPD because it taught me. I, I learned a lot from doing SPD and being in the costume and showing up eight months and doing this work and the challenge of uh, sweating, doing dialogue and physically trying to see through the yeah. So, but in terms of comfort, it was a mystic force. Right. Yeah. Good answer. Good answer. Very PC. Yes. Okay. Super so Raise him up high. Raise him up high. Raise him up high. Yeah, he was like, "What? What?" Mm. <laughs> it gets it gets crazy. <laughs> All right, Azur right. Rolf Nagel. <laughs> I'm sorry, we are messing up your name, Azur. So Azur, we're gonna say Azur Wolf N H O J. Word. Word. Hey guys, <laughs> I appreciate the interviews for John. How is it like when you wear the special effects makeup? Um, okay. Uh, the only time I wore the special effects makeup in Power Rangers was when I played Sergeant Silver back and that was prosthetics. It was prosthetics. And I had to over-exaggerate my mouth because of the limitations within my prosthetics and I wanted the mouth to move, you know? Yeah. Because it was all about getting the shot. 
And you know, we all know what budget cuts are. Ah. <laughs> you know, we know we can't just we can't get the Lord of the Rings prosthetics and CGI. So, yeah. so and it was like I said, uh, it makes the dream work when you just get to it. You know, for boy, and they were they were nice enough that we went through the mask. And it's not like I'm doing a movie and I'm carrying it for 20 million and I could say, well, make the prosthetics look this way and that way. It's like, this is what uh, stunts and makeup had and it made it work. But it was that. And I had to sweat in it and then wear it. So the process of putting it on was like two and a half hours, I think. Ooh. You know? Yeah. And he's sitting in that chair and you're getting your hands done, you're getting your face done. And so, yeah, man, no moving around. And I'm a very, I'm a tweaker. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I'm always wanting to do something and talk. So I said that. Oh, just sit there. Yeah, still. Go and can meditate. I, can I go get a cup of coffee? Can you put a straw in my mouth? <laughs> and then I'll just, okay. Yeah, it is. When you did Lord of the Rings, was that um, a, a pretty hefty makeup process or was that more CGI? It was mocap. It was mocap. And that's, oh. that, yeah, that was another, that's another uh, feather in my bow. Yeah. My bow, you know, like uh, it's, that is physical. Yeah. Because, and you, it's, it's the size of the studio and wetter was like the size of the aircraft carrier with hundreds of cameras. And then I've got these huge, massive screens. And, you know, I'm, you're in, you're, if you haven't learned to love yourself, you love yourself when you're in a leotard. <laughs> and I had a leotard on. <laughs> because you have no choice. You're sitting there like, you don't have, oh, my God, you know, I shouldn't have eaten that donut last week. It's gone straight to my butt. And I'm like, nah, bro. You just get Embrace it. I was in that and I was doing the walk. So all of my, that's what I mean, bro. Like I, every role that I've had, like I've had fun with it. Like from wearing the dog's head to doing prosthetics and acting like an ape. And this one I had to, Bold was a what, seven foot man, you know, and he was a beast. He'd been through battles. I got I had to learn black speech, which is a whole new language and walk. Wow. And then, and, and so as I was wearing the mocap and I was, you know, you've got a little camera, then you've got the dots on your face. So every expression is oh. highlighted. That's how they did Kong, Planet of the Apes. Yeah. And the stunt crew that I worked with on The Hobbit was uh, part of the Planet of the Apes. And some of our warm-ups were like, oh, it's physical. I loved it. I loved it. That's... And the trippiest thing trippiest thing was watching, like, put boxes there, like, and they're supposed to be rocks. And then you go through the motions, and you could see your CGI character moving in there. And so you're like a child. The imagination and the theater is in there, even though it's all green screen now, but you see the world with what it is as massive, man. So, and I really got to let my feathers go. Like, I love the process and seeing seeing the work, you know, people don't get it. And when, I, when my kid, when Bold comes up, he's, on that walk, he's on that walk, he's on that like wolf just walking, and I'm on this like barrel, the steel barrel on these two blocks of wood, and these like four dudes pushing me around. And I have to act, and like instead of just being still and moving around, I have to act as if I'm moving. So like I'm, I'm giving it everything, the physicality. And then I have, and then I see, you know, the army of men ahead of me before I do the war cry. Yeah. Wow, yeah. so cool. That what is what cool, man. <laughs> really neat. They like they do that with Avatar, you know, like mocap is massive. Yeah. If I if we had a shot of Hobbit like twenty years ago. Then it would be hours of sitting in the chair with prosthetics. You know? Right. It's, there's levels to this, man. And I hope uh, all of our viewers and people listening and people with aspirations to come into this, for as awesome as these stories are, there is a groundwork that comes through. I'm just happy to share them, what my experiences are as I've touched it. This is, everyone's dream is to be an A lister. And I was like, no, don't chase that. It's the it's road to madness. Chase working. I would love to be, I'd, I'm happy being a CRB actor, period, in terms of my career. I just want to be an actor working. Yes, yes a working amen. actor. I yes. Word. The word, whoop, whoop, word. word. Yes. For real. For real. That is real talk. That's I mean, real talk. Seriously, because there's, there's so much space between jobs and you have to love it because, oh. I mean, how much how many times does it go? Yes. Like, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, you're absolutely right. There's there's time between jobs. No one talks about it. Yep. They don't post that. <laughs> no, <laughs> exactly. They post makeup room. They post on set. Yeah. They post their food. They post the people that they're working with. And it's all for clout. I yeah. get it. And I'm, you should be proud of what you do. But you will run out of things to post if that's all you got on your page. Yeah. Like, 
when I want to know about someone now, I'll go on their page and I can see them highlight the moments that I see that they're like, I'm proud of this moment. Or they're out of boredom. It's just like, this and that. You'll see me post. Just, yeah, I just I, I really don't care. I'm I'm very slack on social media with my networking and stuff like that. I'm, uh, <laughs> and that's not on purpose. It's just the way that I am. I'm trying to, uh, yeah, I'm consistent with who I am. I don't really care. I'm grateful though. Like, um, if you follow me, then enjoy. You know, my private, my personal page, and my professional page are all just. Well, my one, my wife was the one that got me back on social media. I left it years ago. Like, I went through a patch of not working. So I was just like, what am I posting? And I didn't want to do the jig, man, just to get those likes. I didn't want to. I didn't want to chase it. Like everyone, you know, I don't want to go through what a lot of people are going through, looking at the then they need it for validation. And I'm like, that's what I keep saying. I'm like, you're enough. Slow down, man. Take a breath. Reevaluate your goals. What do you want? Like I grew up with. I didn't grow up with a silver spoon in my in my mouth. I grew up. I grew up in a working class family. We worked. We were poor, and I, I'm grateful for it because it taught me to want it even more. You know. Mm-hmm. And you look at like. You look at the world and what everything's going through and that. Now is even more important to have that ranger attitude, man. Mm. You know, that love, that power to overcome, to fight the bully, to find a voice, to express yourself, your thoughts, your feelings, to love, to share, to include, to accept, to appreciate the diversity out there. Once a ranger, always Wait, a ranger. ranger. Word. Word. Okay, Word. so... Initially, we said we had five. We had five. I think we got to huh? But um, <laughs> it has gone. So we have one, two, three, three. four. And I said no more. Okay, so four. there's That's four. It. And we're just we're just going to ask really quick. With quick answers. It's all good. Okay. Quick I'm, answers. I'm enjoying myself with you guys. And thank you for having me on your platform, man. Oh, no, yeah. thank you. This wasn't a- We're grateful to you. I just didn't <laughs> want to take up all of your time. That's why we, we've been so appreciative. If I could have you for five hours, John, I would have you <laughs> five hours because you are just well, so- we're going to have the big scones and get some Lightful. coffee out then. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. Lightful? <laughs> That's a new word. Can Enlight- I say you said enlightful? Enlightening. You meant delightful and enlightening. Yes. And and to delight- to- enlightful. That's a <laughs> name. Enlightful. Oh, man. You're so enlightful. Okay. <laughs> Michael, super chat, raise my pie. Tomorrow, Rangers in the outfield turns 25. Then on Friday, every dog has his day. These are from our season. We'll be 25 from Zio. Are you girls excited for those episodes? Woo, so excited. Well, I love Rangers (laughs) in the outfield because it was based off of my character and on myself. Yes. Yeah. Yep. They Mm -hmm. wrote the episode because I used to play baseball with the boys. And um, they... Some, some people would be like, you mean softball? I said, no, no. I mean baseball. Mm-hmm. I played baseball. I was a hardcore tomboy. Like, just, I wasn't wearing dresses, none of that. So anyway, um, Rangers in the Outfield, which is one of the episodes that they made in, in Power Rangers, the producers decided to make one of the episodes with my character playing baseball, baseball with the boys. And in real life, I was pitcher, shortstop, and second base. And so... Wow. In the episode, I played pitcher. She kicked the boys' butt. Yeah, basically. I did. I and did. That's, that's and you you know it's like that, that. That's that's why I feel when you're casted for the roles that you play, you highlight some of the good, the, like the powerful things about you because they saw it in the audition. They see it and then they go, "That person's perfect for for that role." Then, like you know, look, look look what you're saying. You know, you were already born for it. This is like. You had the tools to play that role, and you did it. You smashed it. Absolutely smashed it. That's awesome to hear, man. Well, thank you. Thank Aww. you. <laughs> thank okay. you. Okay. Moving on ben, to Ben Hamilton. Ben. Super chat. Raise my pie. Off the two mentors you portrayed in SPD in and M and Mystic Force, I was down with CMRD or CM. Sorry, CMDR. My eyes again. DS, DC the most, better fighter and a badass, mad love. Okay, what's yeah. MDR? Commander. 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 Commander Kruger. Yeah. Doggy okay. Kruger. He's using the lingo, which I'm not familiar with. Okay. That's it, man. It's, it's, young, it's young people. Yes. <laughs> I'm trying. They should I'm so, stop. I'm so, <laughs> um, I 
yeah, I, I thought the storyline for um uh like when you look at Daggeron's storyline, he was a loyal uh loyal soldier to uh Liam Bo and yeah, he felt guilt. But yeah, for me, Doggy Kruger had a massive story. Um being the last of your kind was like the dying indige- indigenous character, you know, the last of the Mohicans, the last of yeah. the Indians, and then the love story. And we all love a good love story. We all love someone overcoming hardship and then finding love. Like it's, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, Doggy Kruger's uh, story from storyline for me. Like we all our characters had a storyline, and it's really nice to know the origins of the way that your character is, so you can start lay- layering on on board your baggage, and you know, so everything. And that's what I was saying um, with you, Nikki, when you're talking about your experience with baseball. For me, um, uh, you know, uh, what I applied in my life was being Polynesian to Doggy Kruger and then thinking I was alone on this island. Or, well, you know, you were the only black person around a group of people that you highlight, you know, the, the differences with racism in it. Like, what makes us different? And for me, um, Doggy Kruger, just not knowing if any of his race was was you know and then he's around all these stiff normal people he doesn't he doesn't know because he's so militant and angry and then he finds his wife is alive and then he's not the only last person of his race like and that's the nicest thing about power rangers is the way we tackle race i have really enjoyed seeing a lot of our indigenous actors coming on that platform all the red rangers and blue rangers started to become multicultural and i was like Mm -hmm. yes yes because we as actors push the envelopes of society. We are the we are the ones that go out there and allow them to expand their imagination of what a better world could be. Mm. You know? It's good. And the the colours for me is everyone can relate to a colour, everyone can relate to a person or a character, everyone can relate to a storyline or a subplot. We cover everything. And like in terms of uh, you know, and I felt we've moved forward from the human rights movement in America and around the world since the 60s and 50s. It's a whole history. And I think Power Rangers is part of that. Power Rangers is constantly part to accept the differences in people. Yes, that's Look. I can say. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. one of many things. That you know, like, that's what I mean with me um, being, there's not many people of my race out there. Like, Dwayne's massive in putting Polynesian uh, awareness out there with what he's done. Because mm. people can't quite pigeonhole him. Is he black? Is he Polynesian? Oh, yeah. Is he a mesh of both worlds? Mm. You know? And then, you know, I come out there in Rangers and I'm seeing a, you know, I'm seeing Paul Mangasiva's face. He was the first um, red red Power Ranger. He's Polynesian. Rest in peace. And then I got out there and people are like, what is this race of people? You know? And there's, are they Hawaiians? Are they Samoans? Are they still trying to? And I, that's what I feel. I put all of that difference, what I've learned growing up, through the 70s and 80s and applied that to the Doggy Kruger as well. Mm. That's awesome. That's deep. That's like you really thought about that. You know, I remember oh, it's, before. It's, it's been my life, man. It's been my life. Being, before, being different. Like every, when I was in high school and I was doing Shakespeare, and I, was doing Shakespeare I was the only brown dude in that class. Wow. I, I understand what that, I know what that feels like. Mm. I know what that feels like. I know what sexism feels like in the industry because I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen Young women that are 24 that are absolutely stunning and they feel too old because they're not in the 18 or 19. Like, you know, we've and like Tinsel Town has changed a lot and learning to accept a lot of different things. We were already touching on these um uh, these areas early in Power Rangers from the 90s all the way up, accepting our unity within our diversity, making like the love, like showing the differences, no matter what sex, color, creed, or gender, like. <laughs> If you fight with love in your heart, you're, you're a ranger. You fight for the greater good. You're a ranger. Once a ranger, always a ranger. <laughs> I had to do that. I couldn't help myself. <laughs> Kenny Shibata. Super chat. Raise my pie. Who do you like more? Doggy Daggeron, Cal, or Course? Course? Mm. Course, I'm Corso. Star Wars. Cal from uh, Hobbs and Shaw. Oh, yeah. And then my two Power Rangers. Who do I like more? Yes. Okay, now that's a very level question because I really loved being in Hawaii for Hobbs and Shaw. But I was, you know, like, like, where do I go? Where do I go? In terms of uh, actors' fulfillment? Oh, my, my, my Power Ranger experience. Because I was young and I was naive and I was very full of myself and I was very overconfident and then I, I learned the hard way and that was not working for six months after it. 
you know, and then back into the audition conveyor belt to go and get more work and then slowly vodka. So for me, it was, yeah, those two characters. Because I got baptized. I learned a lot about the industry, you know? Yeah. You know when they give you that attention? And that's what I see a lot with a lot of people. And you're still trying to relive prom night. It's never yeah. going to work. So you have to reinvent yourself and move forward and find what works for you, you know? So those two characters and that time, the money, the attention, the folk, like, it just hit me hard. And then I went through, and then I went back to building houses. I went on welfare. Like, there was nothing more humbling. Like, I'd come off Battleship. I'd made a, mu- a lot of money. My career was doing well. And I'd come off, I put weight on. I got injured. I made some bad choices. Put my family through it. And I was, like, at the welfare line. And then somebody wants to take the pictures. I'm recognizing it. It hurt my soul, man. It humbled me fast. It humbled me. Because then I'm, I was thinking, like, but I thought I was this, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. it's just like the, the Lord teaches you lessons that just, if you listen to the universe, you can respond and, and reinvent yourself and, and redevelop and find that growth. You know what I mean? And I, I went through that. I know what it's like to go there, have been treated, flowing first class everywhere, eating just off silver plates, man. And then come back in six months later, carrying a family or two with a marriage living in a two-bedroom house and you're, yeah, it was humbling. And I talk about that story with pride because I needed it. I needed, I needed to be taught to be careful. And that's why when I talk to young people about chasing this thing, be careful, be careful. Like it'll take your soul. Mm. Wow. You know, sorry. No, no, no. no, don't say because sorry. That's amazing. We had a long, and when I was talking to you the other day and we were just conversing, um, you know, not on live. I, 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 what I meant to say to you, because we, you were sharing some of your, your story with us, uh, with me. Um, we had interviewed Vernon Wells. I don't know if you know who Vernon Wells is. He's from oh, Australia, yeah, and he's he. We did a podcast where we could have talked for talk with him forever. And he speaks about what you were just talking about. How he was, you know, lost, in lost, it. and he come from Australia, was working there. Then he came to Hollywood, and he, he was silver plates up. and. Mm great this and he was going down the wrong path and almost lost like he literally almost lost his life and how he had to there was one person that that said something to him and it he had to do this switch in his head because it really can it's like a hollywood can really just pull you in and so many people get lost if you do not have the right people around you it's no and it's it's just this chasing you like every time i've gone to alex and I love LA, man. But it depends on why you're there and who you were there for. What you like? I, the, the few times I've been to LA was on work, so I, I would go there for work this night. But then I've also gone there for pilot season on my dollar, you know. And I've spent a lot of money going and then having these interviews and being around these people. And there's this energy of, you know, and you're meeting a lot of different people. And it's about like I get the scan because I walk around with a fanny pack. I'm very like brutish in how I hold myself out there. I'm very Rough around the edges and a uh, bum bag, you know, not a fanny. I get there once over scan. They're like <laughs> polo shirt, fat, a freaking fanny pack, really fanny pack. He's got. <laughs> I'm just standing with my mics, like dude, this is yeah. Because for me, it cuts through the red tape of me having to put on a facade and really sound interested in what who you are and where you're <laughs> from, and is this connection going to be real? And what can I gain from it? And then like you're talking to people and they're looking past you about who else is in the room, right? And I've, I've even been in situations where I've been there. Being who I am, a head person come up once over and then just walk over. Mm-mm-mm. And then they come back and go, I heard you're in the movie. And I'm like, oh, no, this is not happening. You have to pay for that. I, I felt that. This is not happening. Keep moving. And then yeah, I would have shared some wisdom with them. What are you here for? You're an extra? Okay, slow down. Stop kissing too much ass. Like, take it easy. Take your breath. Stop trying to impress. You can't keep the act up for long. You can't. That's what I need these people to know, man. Like, just calm. It's all good. And so now that I, when I go to L.A. and I'm around, uh, you know, I catch up with all the Kiwi actors that are out there. I catch up with a lot of old friends from different movies. And we all know, too, from experience. It's like when the project is done, it is done. It's what's next. That's period. Like, you can't mess with someone. Like, you will build friendships, and the ones that last are meant to be, you know. When you go through this Hollywood dirt and you shake it, sift all that crap out. The gold nuggets and the diamonds that are left there, they're the keepers. And all the crap just goes through. And those are the ones you keep. But you've got to have a good filter. 
you got to have a good way of seeing that and having that energy around. And uh, LA is the same. It can drain you, man, but if you connect with the right people, you know, and don't take people's words for everything. We all know in this industry, man, like I, I joked about the invoice, but I'm serious. That idea sounds great. Good. I'll see that on my table tomorrow. You know what I mean? <laughs> As a, and also, what do people want with your presence? Your time is precious. It is precious. You owe nobody nothing. Because when you are alone, you are not feeling 100%. You're alone. Where are they? So every time you're in a crisis, remember those who are around you. Who care? Don't expect you from them. Don't, don't do that. Like, but, you know, just keep sifting, man. Mm. Keep sifting. Find the diamonds from the rocks. Amen. Mm. Sorry. Open your hands off. <laughs> Ladies, going to direct me. <laughs> Chris Coca, one of our channel members, just want to say super chat. Raise them up high. Just got out of work. Wanted to say hi. John <laughs> Hood wanted to uh, give us a sticker. Face without mouth sticker. And the last one is, what is it? Turbo Prime 94. Turbo Prime 94. Oh, Super, Super Chad, Chad raise him up high. high. Greetings from Houston, Mr. Tua. What were your thoughts on your work in Hobbs and Shaw? Yes. Um, uh, I can, I'll just make it known that I didn't have any scripted lines in Hobbs and Shaw. When I got to the project, I was just so happy to be part of it. I was just so grateful to be part of it. I auditioned for another role, but yeah. And when I got on there, um, I did the thing where I milk the moment as much as I can. So I got to know David Leach, who's a director. No, the American directors are with David Leach, Peter Berg, Peter, you know, Peter Jackson's Kiwi, but uh, doesn't make Ron Howard. Like, and working with David Leach, who's the next stuntman, and he's a John Wick. Uh, yeah, yes. he's brilliant. And, uh, he's, he's done a lot. When he, when he directed that, I kept hinting to him. I was just like, ah, you know. And I'd, I'd just, I was enthusiastic every time I was on set. So I'd be like, ah, Pete, uh, David, yeah, uh, so what's my line again? Like, oh, I don't know if you've got a line. <laughs> Under the illusion, I had this line. That was, and I just keep doing that. I just keep slipping in. And then, you know, they gave me a bone. <laughs> And, and, you know, when I talk to some students, because um, I last year I'd gone back to my old drama school and, and worked with a couple of students on their scenes and that, and I keep saying, your opportunities aren't always set for you. You might be contracted to do something and you go do it. But like, if you get a chance, without being too thirsty, don't seem thirsty, but if you get a chance, you know, like I knew that they flew me over there to play one of the brothers. I was playing DJ's uh, younger brother. You know, like Dwayne Johnson. And he's like one of the biggest superstars in there. So I was just like, oh, I can't let this opportunity go by. Yeah. But don't seem thirsty because, like, there's other big players. There's Jason Statham. There's uh, yeah. uh, Idris Alba. Ooh, Idris. Oh, Idris. 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 You know what I mean? That's it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you know, and they're all phenomenal men. They're all phenomenal men. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, when, when I was on there, I just milk, milk, milk the scene, man, as much as I could. And, and got to... Yeah, get some lines in it. So, but look where it led. Look what that led yeah. to. Yeah. By you being brave enough to do that, now you're on Young Rock, and it's and you would never yeah. have had that experience had. You oh, don't, yeah, but but even that, like some people don't get to is just like uh, the roles I get, I auditioned for. Yes, I went into the gauntlet and fought for it. You know, yeah, because it's always it's always that thing when you you're getting uh, auditioned and you're getting casted. It's just like they milk it down to, and then you find out it's like oh, it's between you and some guy from Florida. And you're like, I'm going to steal the scene, you know? And so in the callback, you can't just do the same performance. You turn it up. You find a different angle. You find two different ways of doing the audition. You find three different ways of doing the audition. You leave as many options as it takes for you to win the role. And then, actors, if you're listening, you detach from it. Teach yourself to detach from it. Once you walk out of that audition room, it is done. It's like when you walk off a set and it's a wrap. Everybody, that's a wrap. And then it's done. You know, that is so, you let it go. That is so okay. So we, we're gonna have a conversation after this because it's you so know, true. it's it's very it's simple to say those those things because something you said to me the other day, you were like, When when you go inside of that room, all you have is that audition, which is so true. You gotta you gotta rip it up. But then the afterthought for me was because I think about a lot of auditions where 
I have felt like I have ripped it up. But you're not the right size. You're not the right color. You're not. So I've taken some of these auditions that I've had and I've decided to look to see who booked the role that I end up getting. Because this casting director will keep calling me. There's several casting directors that keep calling me in, keep calling me in for different roles. Um, and I look to see who booked the role that I auditioned for. And it ends up being a non-African American. Or it ends up being um, someone that looks completely, you know. So I feel like, yes, the audition is all that we have, for sure. Um, but a lot of the times you can go in there and be the absolute best, rip it to shreds. But it's just, no, it yeah, went, to, it to, went to a cousin. It's not meant to be. It, it's, yeah. not, it's just not. That, that, that's not within your control. Yeah. That's why you have to make peace with yourself in terms of what your output is. So you can only control your output. And then you control your input. Yeah. So controlling input is controlling what you choose to let you know go into your self self space where you ask yourself questions and you're having that inner dialogue and the output is what you choose to put down. So listen, I my biggest commercial I got paid for was a McDonald's commercial. This is just a story that I'm sharing so it can relate to what you've just said, Nakia. And they were looking for a 50, 60 year old Caucasian man who was like a farmer. It was a dairy farmer who had eaten a McChicken Royale burger and he went in to see a doctor saying, and then he had to have like a really posh white, uh, uh, you know, Shakespearean accent after he eats the Royale burger. We saw this. Royale is supposed to sound like the queen. So he takes a bite and then, and that was the premise for it. I went in there and when I got the callback, I was sitting in the room with two other fellas that look gray, white haired, Anglican looking old, uh, our white fellas, you know. And I was, I was sitting there, and I'd known that my comedy had got through. My whole, like, influence from Jim Carrey, all of that stuff came through. Because, and they couldn't stop laughing because it was funny seeing that accent coming out of a big Polynesian <laughs> face dressed like a farmer. And I took that role and what their idea was for the commercial. And then I won that commercial, and I did three ads with it and paid good money. So the, the moral of the story is, you might be going, we know this, we know, we know this as actors, and we always say it to ourselves because we're always the what if, what if. We're auditioning and preparing the, uh, the scene to win the audition from what they want to see. But there's always something in you that you bring that's very you that they'll be like, we can market that. Have it in. And sometimes it is. Sometimes it is you're at the mercy of who they choose to cast. I've lost a lot of roles. I've been prepared to fly somewhere, and it's gone to someone in Florida, that's why Florida kid was going to someone in Vancouver. And you're like, you can't, that's what I mean to find your grounding because when that happens, you need to teach yourself the art of detachment, you know? Or find someone that you love in your life that says, it's okay, babe, keep going forward, you're enough. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I mean. This ain't for the faint of heart. <laughs> this, ain't, yeah. this ain't for the faint of heart. No, it's and not. For a lot of people out there, for a lot of people out there that watch or they're listening and so they, if you're going to be critical of what actors do and stuff, and you're out there doing another job and me doing it for years, then you're just you're you're just having an idea unless you can apply it. The writing, the you know, there's levels to this. So I don't go to a, a plumber's job and investigate their plumbing to see if they were good people or not. So a lot of actors out there are human beings. We're pushing like everybody else. It's just that what we do is one of the oldest occupations in mankind's history. We are performers. We entertain. We bring laughter. We bring sadness. We tell stories. It's as old as prostitution, and they are the two <laughs> oldest occupations. Look at the look at the uh, <laughs> how counter and how counter they are, you know. But if you look at like we have the, been the court jesters, we have been the speakers in villages, we have been the witch doctors who try to philosophize and tell stories and mythical legends and stuff. We're entertainers. Yeah. And, you know, to do it in this century is, is not easy. It's not for the faint of heart. And with social media being out there and being so <laughs> rampant, you know, it's just like it makes me even just go back into my shell about what I do so I don't get lost in the blur. There's no blurred lines. There's no delusions. I'm very comfortable where I'm at. And I love what I do. But also make what you love make money because it's the reality of the world that we live in. John, John you're thank amazing. you. Thank you. So hey, do I get a copy of this? Do I get a copy of this? Yeah. Yes. Well, it's going to be on our YouTube channel forever. Oh, yes. You're yes. captured forever. 
Yes. Forever. I'll send you a link if you'd like. Forever. Forever, <laughs> ever. Forever, <laughs> ever. Ever. Forever, ever. Forever, <laughs> ever. Sean, <laughs> thank you again. It's so great. I, I'm, I'm reading the comments also. Um, people are just saying um, what great mm -hmm. advice you're giving and how real you are. And they love your shirt. It is that that shirt is made uh, is made by Legendary Props, which is Dave Plavi, and you can oh, yeah. on red. Dave, shout out Dave. Yeah, and Brandon, shout out to you too, Brandon. Yeah. Brandon's my dude. Yes, Brandon, <laughs> Brandon Benfield. Thank you for moderating for us yes. today. Yeah, yeah. Uh, shout out to my boy Brandon. Uh, you know, um, when he reached out to me to come to the Orlando, he was the. Uh, it was it was I just connected with him and Dave, fly me over there and. I knew they were all thinking, oh, is he a diva? You know, is he? And I was just like, room, feed me, uh, pay me, and I'll, I'll give you my best. And uh, that's my attitude and everything professional that I do. So if you're a future investor, hey, man, give me a job. Man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love you, John. Love you awesome. so much. I look forward to seeing you in person again. Yes, hugs. And that, that'll that'll happen come the new year. Let's just see uh, uh, if our um, travel bubbles open up because I love America. Uh, you guys have always uh, led the way with a lot of things, um, uh, with a lot of change, human rights. We're still fighting for it, and we're still gonna we're gonna win because that's what you guys do. You guys lead lead the country, lead the way. And I'm just so grateful to be. Uh, with you guys, and grateful that I was part of the Power Rangers uh, universe. Oh, thank you so Always. Grateful. And send me a link so I can click on and, and go like this when I'm watching the interview. <laughs> nah, I'll be like this. <laughs> Love you guys. Yeah, bye. You. Bye, bye Jai. Bye. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Aww. I love you. I love John. What a great, what a heart. Wow. Just such a, such a, so much insight and wisdom for such a young man and just so um, real. I just really appreciate his honesty mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and it's important for people to hear that kind of stuff. It's not all, you know, Rain glamour and, sunshine. and rainbows and mm -hmm. sunshine. It's, it's a tough business. It's the, and, and I've spoke about this before. We've talked about this before that just because you were on a television show doesn't mean that when you leave that show, you automatically have something to go to. Some of us, most of us, a don't lot work. of us don't, don't have, you know, we experienced that once we left Power Rangers. We were like, Oh, what are we okay, going to do? What do we do next? Because we didn't have the opportunity to go from one show to the next. And I, I don't know that any of our cast really had that opportunity. Well, and it's hard with actors too, because you still have to have professions that allow auditions. So that's why you see a lot of actors doing waitering and, and um, temp work and things like that, because they need to have space in their life to be able to audition. And, the, and so the, the nighttime jobs, they're working, you know, till three in the morning and then having to get up and audition. It's, it's not easy. It's yeah. not easy. So I appreciate his honesty about that and that his family is number one in yeah. his life supporting his family. Yeah. Beautiful man. Thank you guys for joining us today on yes. Power Rangers Playback. Um, just before we go, we do have, we are going to be, where are we going to be? We're going to be in Oklahoma City. We're going to be in Oklahoma City at the Oklahoma, uh, OKC. Pop Oklahoma Culture. Pop Con. Pop, isn't it Horror Con? No. He does do a Horror Con, but this one is called Pop Culture Con. OKC culture is not culture not spelled con. With, a, with a K. It's not spelled with a K on the website. Culture con. I thought it was horror, but it doesn't matter. Has, That's where we're going to be. It does have a horror con in addition to this. But However, what we're doing at um, OKC, if you want to be on our OKC. OKC, OKC, if you'd like to be on Who Knows It Best and you're in Oklahoma City, we are going to have a panel. And at our panel, we are playing. Who, Who knows, knows it best? And you get an opportunity to win gifts and prizes. Um, you're going to be competing. Fans are going to be competing with uh, Power Ranger trivia. So if you think you know Power Rangers and you're in Oklahoma City, you, you want to be on our YouTube channel, you should come because we're going to film it and we're going to put it on our YouTube channel. 
Dave had something to say here. What's Dave saying? What is Dave Plavy saying? John is the most humble person I've ever had an honor of getting to know. Well, what about us, Dave? Yeah. 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 Hello. (laughs) Dave. His passion for family and his craft are just amazing. Blessed to call him friend. Yes. It's so, it is beautiful. It's a, it's, it's it's such a depth of love in his heart. You can just feel it all Mm -hmm. over him. So, Mm -hmm. oh, thanks so much guys for tuning in. We've really enjoyed this hour and a half hour and 40 minutes actually. yeah yeah this is the longest one we've done except since jdf, JDF yeah yes. yeah thank you guys <laughs> thank you. Bye. bye